Sisters and brothers, a very hearty welcome to each one of you to the 29th Sunday in the ordinary time of the liturgical year. This Sunday we celebrate also as the Mission Sunday, the universality of the mission of God, expressed, nuanced and described in and through the history of the Church and the human history. As I encounter this Mission Sunday, there comes into my mind two young people who made a great impact on the history in our time and in the times before us. The first one is Alexander, popularly known as Alexander the Great, a young, energetic, vibrant man who wanted to conquer the whole world. And it seems that he conquered the whole world. But his call was to die very young. As he was about to die, he called one of his own confidant closer to him and told him, My dear friend, when my dead body is carried to the cemetery, do make sure that both my hands are put outside the coffin so that the whole world will come to know that Alexander the Great did not carry anything that he conquered and won for himself into the grave that is prepared for him. What a contradiction. A man who conquered the world had nothing to take along with him when he died. But I look at another young man whom I encounter and about whom I speak with much more confidence. Jesus Christ, my Lord and Master. He was very young. He died at the age of 33. He started many things but never completed anything. But when he died, he extended both his hands over the humanity and the whole world, and he told, it is accomplished. On the one hand, we have a man who conquered the world and finally says, I have nothing to take. On the other hand, we have a man who did not conquer at all, but has got plenty to say that it is accomplished. Yes, sisters and brothers, this is the history of the humanity. It is the story of God as well. When we live this Mission Sunday, we are equally invited to encounter our own very selves in that history of the world and in that story of God. To evaluate, to nuance, and to describe what my story in this world is. It's here that I look at the gospel of the day. We are very well presented with the universality of God's mission in our times. We must know, at that time of Jesus, the Jews were under the political power of the Romans. They had to pay taxes to the Romans and that too in Roman coins, which to a great extent politically symbolized that the sovereignty that they have over the Jews is very supreme, so that the Jews can never revolt against the Romans. It's in this context that the Jews realized very often when Jesus is criticizing them, they thought that he is siding with the Romans. Therefore, they bring a group of Herodians who were in fact favoring the Romans and makes them to put the question in front of Jesus. Is it right to pay taxes to Caesar or not? Any answer from Jesus in this context would be trapping him. If he says yes, 
he would be siding with the Romans. If he says no, he would be going against his own people, the Jews. But you see, Jesus comes ahead of them. He says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and give to God what belongs to God. Sisters and brothers, there are two kinds of powers. The very first power is the universality of the power of God. God is supreme over all the creatures that he has created. Therefore, that power can never be dominated over by some other powers. God's power is the most supreme sovereign power. But there's a second kind of power. That's the power that is coming from God, but is entrusted with the human beings who are his creatures. To some extent, we can say this is the power of the political world. This is the power of the religious world, where God's power is handed over to human agents who are to govern the humanity and the world in righteousness, in justice, and in equality. When God's power is well taken care, there would be justice and righteousness reigning over the whole world. What we need to understand on this Mission Sunday is this truth. What controls the whole world is the universal power of God. But when human beings do not understand in reality and in truth what that universality of the power of God, human beings begin to misinterpret the true power that is entrusted to them. It's here we have the political arrogance, religious intolerance, and emotional reactions coming up time and again. I look at that first reading today from the book of prophet Isaiah. This is something very strange. God is today appointing a Gentile as the king of Israel. King Cyrus is appointed as the king to rule over Israel today. He used to bring justice, to coordinate people, and to bring peace and harmony among the people of God. Normally, all of us are well aware that a king or a prophet is chosen and anointed from the race of the Jews and not from outside. God is breaking the barriers of boundaries and borders, the boundaries of caste and right and religion and language today in order to make each one of us aware the universal power of God has to be established even through the people who are not considered to be part of that particular religion or region. God is powerful. That's why St. Paul, in the second reading today, through the letter to the Thessalonians, invites the people of Thessalonia, telling them, I greet you together with Silvanus and Timothy, and I appreciate all the good works that you are doing. The works of faith, the labor of love, and the steadfastness of hope. Three theological virtues are highlighted here by Paul. The work of faith, the labor of love, and the steadfastness of hope. The work of faith that you are living today is not your own personal merit. Faith is a grace and gift of God. And through the sacraments of the church, which the Catholic Church wants us very well as the seven sacraments, accompanying a human being from birth to death, are meant to develop this grace of the faith that God has given to us. We need to realize in our faith, God is the universal King. He is our God who deserves our worship, honor, and adoration. On the other hand, we also realize the works of faith that we are engaged in, wherein we develop our own dependence on God, we are also invited to understand the consequence of faith as the labor of love. Every belief system has to be expressed in relationship and love. And this labor of love does not begin in faraway places. As we are celebrating the Mission Sunday today, we should realize, my dear brothers and sisters, 
the labor of love, which is the consequence of our faith, has to be implemented, lived and worked out in the concrete contextual situation of our own families, in our relationship with one another. In my understanding of my wife, my husband, in rearing up my children in mutual love for each other, and in contributing my might for the well-being of the people who are entrusted to my care, my community, and my relationship, we enter into that labor of love. I always believe our understanding for each other in our own families and communities, building up wonderful relationship of faith, trust, and hope in each other, we would always be able to also look beyond our, our own selves and give a bit of that might of our labor of love to the poor who are around us. Yes, my sisters and brothers, we need to know Mission Sunday invites us to that labor of love. How many people in our own country go to bed without having food to eat? How many people struggle when the rain comes without having a shelter above their head? How many people go naked without having proper clothing for themselves? Can we extend a bit of our care, our concern for these poor around us, which would be the greatest contribution that we make on this Mission Sunday? Finally, your work of faith, your labor of love, should lead you to the steadfastness of your hope. We have experienced hopelessness in our society. Think about the time of the pandemic COVID, how much we struggle to have hope that what is God doing for us? Is God alive? Were the fundamental questions that we raised. But we realized every flood, every pandemic, every sickness would go away. God's universal power would rule over the world. Therefore, let us ask ourselves some of these fundamental questions. Am I accepting the universal power of God in my life? Am I able to understand that power of God entrusted with the human agents represented through my religious and political leaders? Am I able to have the steadfast hope, the labor of love, and the work of faith in my personal, communitarian, and family life? Let this Mission Sunday make us aware of the mission of God which we are called to fulfill in our day-to-day concrete, contextual life situation. God bless you. Amen.